for 17 years we've been, almost 17, we're in our 17th year, we've been on the streets of this nation. I would call them the mean streets of America every single day, uh, talking to people and uh, participating in, that, in the street ministry, we call it. Um, it is a ministry that we uh, zealously guard and see to because we believe that it is absolutely essential to this nation at this time. Only about a month ago, a uh, Continental flight crashed about two miles from here in Clarence, New York, a lovely suburb of Buffalo. And uh, at the funeral memorial service that they had in town, uh, an extremist fundamentalist group came and were holding up signs attacking gays, which had no place in this situation here. And I, I find that uh, offensive. God himself has now become America's terrorist, killing and maiming American troops in strange lands for fag sins. We turn America over to fags, they're coming home in body bags. Part of our news release we sent out yesterday. Like when you first meet people, a lot of people, they don't know who we are immediately. They don't immediately connect the dots or they don't know our last name. And then when they do, they're like, oh, are you with, is Fred Phillips your dad? That happens a lot. It's like, no, he's our grandfather. It's like, well, you don't believe that stuff, do you? Because they can't, they don't reconcile who we are, how we behave with the words they see on the signs. They don't understand that this, the things that we do when we go out on the streets to pick it, that that is the most loving thing you can do for someone, is to warn them that their sins are taking them to hell. Jesus Christ said that was the very definition of loving your neighbor as yourself. And so if the fact that these kids that we go to school with are so ignorant of the scriptures, that is, we actually wrote a paper on it in soci sociology. Yeah, they expect to see some like demons from the church and then they just see us and we're nice and we're, and we're we work really, really hard. We look, work really hard in school and so like we help them and they help us and they don't really, they've been told lies by their parents. They grew up as we did and they see us on these streets almost every day. And so they expect some really hateful people and what they see is us and it doesn't reconcile very much. Exactly. It's the face of the pedophile monster called the Catholic Church. Like the flesh and bone on PreTradeBoys.com. You pay them to rape those children. You're all guilty. You did it yourself. You liked it. Um, could you tell us about your sign today and what it means? Uh, <laughs> what, what? If you want to explain, just what you mean. What, well, what, what the purpose? sign says "Fags Doom Nations," and I think it's fairly self-explanatory in terms of the Bible story about what happens to civilizations when they endorse and support uh, homosexuality. This is a free society, and people should have the right to express themselves. I disagree with everything you say, but I will fight to the death for your right to say it. Was that Voltaire? was a great free thinker. Uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, which for record protests at the funerals of our servicemen killed overseas, is a very unfortunate example of ignorant citizens taking advantage of uh, rights which we must treat as fragile pieces of cut crystal. And I fear there is no doubt that all of our rights uh, will be impinged because of uh, their brutality to the families. And they could find much better venues to spread their message. Is it the families? Is it the government? Is it the bitter bikers? Is it the people on the street driving by? It's all of them. Our message is to the living. We are intent, we are intent on getting these words before as many faces as we can possibly get them. Our job is to preach this gospel to every creature and by the mercy and the grace and the kindness, the blessings of the Lord our God, Today, our faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. A lot of people call us brainwashed, <laughs> but we listen to the words that our parents and that our, you know, that our grandfather, our, our pastor, 
preaches. And we don't just listen to their words. We search the scriptures because that is our responsibility. We don't just listen to them and then, you know, if, if their words don't comport with the scripture, then it's your duty to call them out on it and say that's not what that means and to get to the bottom of the matter. And that's what we do. Not only will I no longer help you, forget that. I will fight against you. I will help the Babylonians. I am now your enemy. You know, he's, he's just definitely a nutcase. And, but you know, unfortunately nutcases are allowed to have children. And there are a lot of people who are nutcases who have children and abuse them with their racist, crazy, hateful, nutty ideas. If you love someone, you are not going to stand there and watch them, you know, just a, you wouldn't watch a little child walk out into the middle of the street and say, it's always okay if it makes you happy. Now you say, you get out of the street, you're going to get hit by a car. Now, if you would do something to save their temporal, their body, why would you not say something to them when you see them going astray? You know you live like Satan and you want us to live the same way too, but we know if you're in, where you will descend, and we don't want none of that. Don't teach your kids to hate God, that kind of loves a facade, and strong our sense of the word fool, better trust and obey him. Read the Bible, you'll find that God will treat you well, and he will send you to hell if you obey all his written words, you do to everyone, you big nerd. Many freaks want to put their own wives away, divorce them and say it's done. So you call yourself Christian, do you think God? When they arrested me because my 10-year-old son was standing on a flag in goofy Nebraska, Bellevue, Nebraska, pretending that I guess they think they've seceded from the Union. Everyone in the whole country knows that you can not only stand on a flag, but you can burn the flag. You can imagine the shock on, uh, on that 10-year-old child's face. All his life he's been standing on these streets with his loved ones, and we've been standing on flags. and hanging them from my waist and turning them upside down, anything and everything. So you can imagine his shock when he looks up and these police officers are going to take his mom to jail right before his face. He's standing there watching this and all of a sudden he blurts out, why are they doing this? Affiliated with Westboro? Um, since I was a child, uh, so 20 years. We didn't start our, uh, you know, street protesting until I was three. So yeah. three. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, 17 years. 17 years. And um, how often do you come out? Uh, well, I try to come out every day, but sometimes you know, because I'm in college and I work in the afternoons, I might not be able to come out. But I try to do it every day, and we do have several pickets every day, so I'm able to get out to at least one of them. And today, how many pickets do you guys have today? Well, uh, we, unless there's something special going on in the afternoon, we usually just go to the churches, picket the churches in the morning. So it's for about, there's four groups, and each group does three pickets. When I was in high school, you never, you didn't even, the last thing in the world you would have heard about was, uh, homosexuals and same-sex marriage and gay rights and so on and now that's all you hear about and I saw a recent report that 90 some percent of high school students support same-sex marriage that's not that's not a good sign that's a, and then you know. how often do you come out and, uh, and pick it? well pretty much somewhere every day just got back from Mankato Minnesota last night it was a long trip we had a soldier's funeral okay Mankato, Minnesota. Okay. And had a bunch of young people out there trying to in, in, incite violence against, against you. Us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of college students and a lot of the younger ones are more aggressive and more, more out front with it. We had the mayor come up to us, uh, verbally assaulting us and 
and the, his his parting gesture was sticking his rear up in the air, end up in the air, and patting it. That's the friggin' mayor of Mankato. <laughs> we just have to keep an eye on them so that they don't hurt people. And I know that with Fred Phelps's group, he was sued, and I think he lost a case. So I think that's where you know the the courts came into play and did what they were supposed to do. The kind of religion that really is open to profound criticism is fundamentalism, absolutism, where you're convinced you're right and everyone else is wrong. Some of their standpoints, for example, of saying they are the only church in the states that will go to heaven is suddenly wiping out millions of people that would call themselves Christians. Uh, hundreds, if not millions, of churches that would say we are a Christian evangelical church that believe in the Bible and believe in the doctrine of Christ. So I, to a certain degree, you would quite easily call them a hate group or even a cult. Uh, we were at a, a Lutheran convention picketing outside at a busy intersection in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we had heard from this group in Indiana. They even were out picketing. And um, they turned up. They just showed up. They had kept an eye on our website, and they knew we were going to be there, and here's a bunch of people from this church. And so we're on all four corners, and some of my daughters were standing here, and then there were some young ladies from that group, and they were talking. And the guy had told us that he serves God, and he had a lot of words to say, and they all sounded good. And this is the best that it ever gets. There's a lot of, of situations where you immediately can see they're in error in so many ways. But I hear this little girl talking to my daughters and she says, stepmom. And I said, wait a minute, go back to that stepmom. Where is your stepmom? And she said, she's right over there. I said, well, where's your dad? Well, he's right over there, talking, you know, another corner. And I said, well, where's your mom? Because the only right answer to that question for her to be permitted to have a stepmother without adultery being all over that picture, is if her mom is dead. She said she lives in New York with her new husband. So I went right over to that preacher and I said, you told us that you serve God and you are the guy responsible. You're the gatekeeper. Do you have a man that's a member in good standing of this church who's living in adultery? And he says, he looked a little shocked like, what do you know? I said, I'm talking divorced and remarried, you know that's adultery. And that guy started talking a mile a minute to justify why he lets that go. And we, and we were out of there. I said, that's it. Don't tell us you serve God and then you have adultery in your pews, in people in good standing. What message does that give to everyone else? You have no moral authority once you give it over. You understand? That's not to say that people don't do wrong upon an occasion. But you don't make it your vocation and you don't say it's okay. And if you do have a person that's taken in a fault, you'd better tell them. You better recover them or you better get them the heck out of there. That's all. There's no other option. They're either going to repent and stop it or they're out of here. If you say that God does not love everyone, they just go crazy. I mean, literally, I mean, we unravel. were in, yeah, unravel. We, uh, we ran track in high school um, and there's a lot of, you know, people in there, they'd get to know you a little bit and then they'd start asking us questions. A lot of people are, they don't want to, they don't want to bring it up. They're afraid to bring any of that stuff up. And then, you know, it was like they'll work up the courage and they'll ask. And then, so, you know, we tell them. And then they would get so, I remember there's this one girl, she was freaking out. She, she just kept saying John 3, 16. She was like screaming, literally screaming. And I was like, I was like, now keep reading. Go, go to the, you know, go to John 3, 18. Just go down two verses. It says that if you uh, don't believe, you're condemned already. You are as surely in hell today as if you were already walking the sulfur streets. This generation teaches that you can do whatever you want. You can live like the devil himself and God loves you anyway. So yes, it's changed. It used to be that everybody knew that there was a hell and there was a God and there was a standard and a day of judgment and uh, that God expected his people to obey his standards.